Hey everybody, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a whack-a-mole style game in App Lab. Let me play the game for you. When I hit the run button, we see there's a welcome screen. I click the play button and it starts the game. We see a little emoji, cool guy with glasses. And every time I click on the cool guy with glasses, I get 100 points. But if I miss, like right now, it goes down by 100 points. So I get 15 seconds. Once 15 seconds is up, it will switch to the final screen, which is called the score screen. And it shows me the final score right here. And we see there's also a play again button. When I click that, it brings me back to the welcome screen where I then have to click the start new game again, which is important that you do, uh, do it that way. And it brings me back into the game. I have another 15 seconds to try to get points. Again, it can become a negative score if I am really bad at the game. It can become negative. Um, but hopefully I can get some points here and the game is over. All right, let me show you how to make this game. As described in the Moodle, you'll need to uh, open up a starter file. There's a link on the Moodle for that. And once you open it, you'll want to click the remix button to make your own copy of the starter file, rename it with your name. And I've done all that. All right, so here's the starter file. When we first open this, the starter file has in the design view, three screens, welcome, and game and score. On the welcome screen, uh, you're gonna add a button here. So let's get started with that first. We're gonna bring a button out here and we're gonna call this button the play button. Now remember, the ID is super important. It's how you use, it's the name you use in your code. So make sure you use the same names here that I show you. And uh, we're gonna make it a little bit bigger, center it here. Let's go to the next screen, the game screen. Now on here, we see we have two elements already. We have this emoji and we have this background image. The emoji is actually a label that has text in it. And uh, that you can, I show you in the Moodle how you can get, you can change up this little text icon. When we first start the game, um, the emoji is gonna start moving around the screen, but he has to move to very specific X and Y locations. They have to be within the blue squares. The blue square grid is a background image. Now these two, uh, the label and the background image are already provided for you. You just need to code them. But one thing that's not on the screen, we need a label and we need to put in here the word score. No number, just the word score and a colon and a space and um, we will just make this a little bit bigger and we'll change the font to 32. That looks pretty good. We'll position it down here. Now it's really important that you have two labels, one that contains the word score. That won't change during gameplay. And you need another label and we're gonna call it current score label. Remember these IDs are really important. They can't have spaces in them and it should look something like that. Let's make this 32 font size. And let's get rid of the word text and just put a zero in there. One more thing you need to do here is you need to click and drag and make that bigger so that it wouldn't hold a larger uh, number size. Again, just to re reiterate, you have two labels down here. One holds the word score and the other uh, is gonna hold the number of the score and it's the one that you need to rename current score label. All right, let's go to the third screen, which is our score screen. We have it looking like this. What we need to do here is add a label here, make the size large again, call this final score label, because that's where the final score will be displayed and put a zero here where it says text and make the label quite a bit bigger so that no matter how big the score is, it'll fit in there. You can also align it to the center. One more thing we need here is a button and this button will be the play again button. So let's give it an ID of play again button and put play again here. All right, this is all set up and ready to start coding. Let's go back to the code view. Here we are in code view. The first thing we're going to do is create a variable, call it score, and give it the value zero. 
We also want another variable. It's going to be called timer. We don't need to give it a value. We'll use those variables later. Now, under UI controls, we want to create an event. When this button here on the welcome screen is clicked, it will bring us to the game screen. On event, choose the play button. The event is click and it'll call a function. In that function, we want to do a few things. We want to set, we want to set our score variable to zero. The next thing we want to do is set the screen. When we click that button, we want to set the score to zero and set the screen to the game screen, which is the second screen. And then we want to call a function that's going to be called play game. Now we don't have that function yet. So what we're going to do is create, pull out a function here, uh, a function, and we're going to give it the name play game. Once we've created this function, we can now call it here inside this on event. It's really important to note that a function like this play game function will not be run if we don't call it. In addition to the play game function, we're going to have a couple other functions in our game. We're going to have one called move emoji. So replace the word my function with move emoji. Normally when a function name consists of two words like this, you capitalize the second and another function called end game. You'll note that I'm putting all my event handlers at the bottom and my other functions up here above them. Okay, now that I've defined some functions, I'm going to go into my play game function and I'm going to bring out a variable. I'm going to assign a value to my timer function that I created above. And what I'm going to do there is I'm going to set an interval so that something happens every one second. Now we look into the blue control area and we don't see a block for set interval. So we're going to have to type it in ourselves. So come here to show text. And here where you see these two underlines, remove those and type in instead set interval and you'll see it pops up as an option there. So select that set interval then a set of parentheses. What we want to do is call this move emoji function we just created and then a comma and then a number 1000. What this is going to do is every 1000 milliseconds, which is one second, every one second call the move emoji function, which we just created down here. On the next line, add a set time out function call and inside the parentheses add a call to end game, comma, and we'll go 15 times, which is an asterisk, 1000. So that's 15 seconds. So the game will play for 15 seconds and then the end game function will be called. Let's go back to the show blocks. At this point in the game, it should look exactly like this in block view. Now let's work on the move emoji function. Inside this function, we need to set two variables. Let's pull out two purple blocks, one for variable called X and one for variable called Y. These are going to represent the X and Y location of our little emoji label as it moves around the screen. We want to set it to a random value. So let's come in and choose the random number generator, one in each of these. We're going to set it to a value between 0 and 3. Do that for both of them. Next, under UI controls, we want to set the position of our emoji label. And we want to set its X and Y location. However, we see two more argument positions here with the number 100 in them. Those are for the width and the height. We don't need to change those. So click the little arrow that points to the left twice to remove those two argument positions. In these two positions where we see zeros, we're going to change that by doing a little math. Next, come into the math section of the toolbar and pull out the addition operator. 
put one in each and next pull out a multiplication operator, putting it in the right side of these two operators. So what we're going to do is we're going to add 60 to the x variable above multiplied by 60. And for the y, we're going to add 60 to the y variable multiplied by 50. Now these numbers have to do with the uh, with our game screen here and it has to do with the distance both on the x and the y axes between these blue squares. And somebody did a little math and figured out that these are about 60 pixels across from each other on the x and about 50 pixels apart from each other on the y. And so when we do this math, the emoji label gets positioned randomly in one of these 16 positions. Okay, if we test our game right now by running it, we'll see that the little emoji every one second is moving around this grid of 16 blue squares. Perfect. However, if I click it, nothing happens and the score doesn't change. We need to program that part of the game next. We need two more on event functions. Go to UI controls, pull out an on event, actually two of them. The first one is going to control the emoji label, and the next one is going to have to do with the background image. If we click on the emoji label, we want to get 100 points. If we click on the background image, we want to lose 100 points. Remember, we're storing the score in a variable called score. So let's pull out two of these assignment operator blocks, change the name to score for both. We want to take the current score and add it, add 100 to it. So we need some math. On the left, type score, and on the right, add 100. Oops, this is supposed to be subtract. So what we're doing is taking 100, adding it to score, and storing it back in score. Next, we need to take this variable score and set it into our label. Find the set text block. We're going to work with the current score label, and we want to set it to the variable of, called score. So in here where it says text, remove everything, including the quotation marks and type in score. Do that again for the next on event block. Current score label set to the variable called score. Let's run the game, start it. If I click on the emoji, I add 100 points. If I miss, I lose 100 points. Perfect. As you recall, earlier in our game, we said that we would be calling the end game function after 15 seconds, but currently our end game function doesn't do anything, so we need to program that next. Grab a set screen, put it inside end game. When the game is over, we want to set it to our score screen, which is the, which is the third screen, and we want to set the text of our final score label to the variable score. If you test the game now, after 15 seconds, the screen should change to the score screen and you should see the final score displayed there. Okay, there's just one more thing we need to do to finish this game. On the uh, third screen, which is called the score screen, we have a play again button. That button is called the Play Again button. We need to program it so it brings us back to the Welcome screen. Here in the Code view, we need to add from the UI controls another on event. Put it down at the bottom. In here, we're going to be controlling again the Play Again button. What we need to do is, first of all, stop this set interval function up here from running and reset it. 
Here's how you do that. In here, we're going to have to go to the show text. In this play again button function, we'll have to type clear interval. You can see it pop up here, choose that. And in there, we need to put in the variable called timer that we created earlier. Make sure you put a semicolon at the end of that command. Go back to show blocks. Now down here, we're going to use a set text to set the current score label back to our score and set the screen to the welcome screen. There you go, that should do it. Let's test the game to see if it, it works. Hit the run button, start a new game, play the game, it should run for 15 seconds. If you miss the emoji and click the blue squares, you lose 100 points. It brings you after 15 seconds to this screen where it shows your score and the play again button brings you back to the welcome. Oops, I noticed one little error down here in our console. It says clear interval invalid parameter. I made one small mistake in our code up here on line four. We need to get rid of that word var. So let's go to show text. What we're doing here on line two, we're creating the timer using the keyword var, but we're also recreating it on line four. We need to just simply get rid of that word var, that keyword var and uh, that should solve the problem. Alrighty, that's it for this game of whack -a emoji, whack-a-mole style game in App Lab. If you enjoyed this, maybe leave a comment below, and I'll see you next time.